My collection of video game music is not exactly one based around completionism. I don't keep vast libraries of soundtracks, I cherry pick the ones I like. Sometimes I'll just take one from one game, or dozens from another. Even with my favorite video game soundtracks of all time, I'll leave a few out. Sonic 2? Yeah, I didn't really like the two-player version of Mystic Cave Zone. I don't know, I guess it always just reminds me of how much better the one-player version is. Ocarina of Time? All those ambient tracks for the inside of caves work well for the game, but they're not something I'd probably just sit there and listen to. I could go on. Suffice to say, it's rare that I'm going to like every song in a game. And while Populous The Beginning may not be one of my favorite soundtracks, it's one of the few games where I kept every single one of its tracks in my playlist. It's a fantasy game featuring fictitious warring tribes that travel via magic across different planets. Sorta. As such, the game's tribes are not based on any one existing culture from the real world, but an amalgamation of sorts. You can spot some influence of African tribes, Native American, maybe a little bit of Australia's Aboriginal peoples, and sometimes I can even swear I see a little bit of ancient Japan in the mix. The music fits the game's theme flawlessly. As you navigate the menu, complete with flickering firelight and shadows that follow your mouse cursor, you hear what almost sounds like a didgeridoo, but not exactly. It creates this haunting feel, like you're in some foreboding alien place. Like all the music you'll hear in this game, most of the instruments are ones you can't exactly put your foot on, but they fit the concept of what sort of instruments one might find in a tribal setting. A lot of vocals, chanting, some woodwinds, although not very much in the way of drums, but we'll get into that a little later on. Now, with real-time strategy games, background music can become a bit of a challenge. Traditionally, most video games have looping background music that changes from one level to the next, or one area to the next, or one situation to the next. RTS games, however, have a slight issue with that. You don't progress from one level or one area to another. Each match is in one location and you're going to be playing in that one location for a pretty long time. If you have just one looping music track, it's going to get stale pretty quickly. Some games like StarCraft approach this differently. Instead of one track repeating endlessly, the composer made several tracks in a set list. The game plays each one once, then moves on to the next, until it reaches the end, then jumps back to the first. This just means that now instead of one, you have three songs that repeat forever. Or four if you got the expansion. Is that slightly better? I guess? But it also means none of the music loops. What's wrong with that? Just that video game background music is most often used to create a certain feel and provide atmosphere and just kind of sink into the background. When the music seamlessly loops, it feels more smooth, less distracting. You can enjoy it without always noticing it. Having it stop every couple of minutes so you can jump ahead to the next one doesn't really create atmosphere. It just feels like you're listening to a bunch of songs on a playlist, over and over. So what's the solution? Well, Populous The Beginning has an interesting approach. It's not even particularly innovative, but it's effective. Simple and effective. There are four looping background tracks. It'll pick one at random when you start a new map, and just loop until you finish that mission. Or zoom out to space. It's a weird thing. Let's take this one for example. This track is very long, and takes quite a lot of time to loop, so it's far less likely to feel stale. There's something so soothing and serene about it. It gives the feeling of being in nature. It has a pristine and peaceful quality to it, but there's also just a bit of an edge to it. Something to remind you that you're not completely safe while the enemy tribe is still out there. At one point, it actually seems to end, and then it sounds like a new song is starting. Almost like with StarCraft system. 
but then it brings it back. And you can see how even this new direction it's taken is still connected to the rest of the song. It's very well done, making the basic theme stretch out throughout the whole piece without getting old or repetitive. Now, you'll remember I mentioned there's not much in the way of percussion. There's a reason for that. First, it gives a more peaceful feeling for most of the time when you're not actually in combat. But then as you enter into different levels of conflict, there are multiple different drum patterns that get introduced, flawlessly integrating with the music that's been playing this whole time. It's a fantastic way to add tension, while also breaking up any potential monotony in the song, so even though it's on an endless loop, it's never going to stay completely the same. And just like that, that serene, pleasant melody becomes intense battle music with what sound just like tribal war drums. The war drum patterns are actually even subtly different to go with the different music tracks. This was all very carefully composed. Each track had to have been painstakingly arranged so that it can sound peaceful, suspenseful, or full of action-packed intensity with only the percussion ever changing. Is there a perfect solution to the RTS music problem? I don't know, but this is the best one I've seen.